feels good, but it can cause a lot of damage. Please welcome Dr. Steve Mulholland, live in studio with me right now. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Ava looks great, but you know, some people might look at the picture and say, uh, I don't see a huge difference. That's kind of the point. She wasn't trying to be a teenager. She wanted to look refreshed, and a lot of what she's doing is preventative. Little subtle things, fine lines, wrinkles, sun damage, they all conspire so your skin looks a little lackluster, and that's prejuvenation. You'll hear sometimes from European women, it's all about the prevention before you get to the point where you feel like you're looking older than your age. And that's part of what that procedure was about. I asked you if any of that hurt, and it does hurt a little bit. Yeah, looking your best off and it has some discomfort associated with it. Right. Uh, even like Eva did some baby Botox and baby Juvederm and some lasers, and they all have a flicky sensation to them. Yeah. Uh, but unlike something you might do at your day spa where there's no pain but it lasts 24 hours, this kind of uh, uh, architectural change in your skin can last months to, to years. And so no discomfort, no long-term value usually. And do you have to keep going with it? So topical anesthetic cream, about half an hour to an hour, several treatments. You can look three to five years fresher or younger. And then maintenance, about two to three treatments a year to maintain that youthful look. And then, of course, sun avoidance and sun protection. Okay, because the sun is the thing. People talk about aging, but really aging is just sun exposure. If you can stay away from the sun, you will probably look young forever. It's a thing that dries out your skin and it can actually cause some serious damage like cancer. Totally true. Um, sun, it feels so good, but it really undermines the undercarpet of your skin, so it degenerates the skin. And in the worst case scenario, it turns certain cells into cancer cells. Okay, so cancer cells, uh, as you mentioned in the tape, it's on the rise. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us feel that it's one of those things you can get, but you can't die from. It's okay, but a lot of us are not on top of figuring out if it's happening on our bodies and what it actually looks like. So how do you know if you have it? Well, if you have a lesion that uh, doesn't go away and you think, oh, this is just a little blemish, but it's getting bigger or it's crusty or it's painful or it bleeds or, uh, or it's dark, if it's yeah. dark, um, and you're at all suspicious, you should see your doctor and, and get it looked at. Now, a lot of us, you know, we might be looking at our legs and our arms on a regular basis. We're not looking at our backs or the back of our necks or even our backsides. How would you detect it if something, if there was a skin change on, in your back? Well, if you have a history of skin cancer in the family or you have a lot of moles, it's good to have a dermatologist or a very astute family physician with skin expertise to do what are called mole checks, yeah. uh, where we have these photographic systems. We can take a picture and then a year later compare the pictures to mm -hmm. see if things are getting bigger or suspicious. So bottom of the feet, nail plates, um, even on your mucosal surfaces like the eye or the tongue, uh, and then on your back. Look for anything that is unusual and doesn't go away. Let's take a look actually at a sure. few uh, scars that you might have on the skin that would be unusual. What are we looking at so right So you're here? looking at a basal cell cancer and the basal cell cancers are very common. 80 to 85 percent of all skin cancers, usually white skin, sun exposed surfaces like your scalp, back of your hands, your face, your chest, and they look like a, a raised border. They become ulcerative in the end stages like this, but that might have been just scabby like this basal cell for years, just a scabby crusty lesion that doesn't go away. This is melanin which can be pigmented most of the time like this one or even not have pigment but it's the one that goes into your bloodstream quickly and can what's called metastasize go to other organs and can be quite fatal whereas basal cell cancers tend to stay on your skin and you get them removed uh, they don't they don't tend to spread this can spread there is a lot of myths out there that if mm -hmm. you got dark skin you're fine is that the truth not the truth I mean if you have white skin and you're in the Sun you are going to be a sitting duck for skin cancer mm -hmm. so um, but if you have dark skin Asian, Hispanic, Southeast Indian, Caribbean, you are not immune to cancer. Bob Marley died of a melanoma. And so dark things that get darker uh, mm -hmm. or expand, if you have dark skin, you should be concerned, see a dermatologist, and have your skin monitored. So it has yeah. to be sunscreen all the time, hats all the time. Yep. cover up when you can. Any way you slice it, sun's not going to be good for you. And many, mm -hmm. many women think, oh, I put on my SPF, I'm not going to get old. Wrong. You're going to get brown skin, wrinkles, and degeneration. Got it. And even worse, you could get cancer. Yes. There are worse things than looking old, people. You might right. get cancer, right? Thanks so much to Dr. Mulholland. Everyone in the audience will receive a VVA Skin Vitamin C Scrub. Use it, have fun. Protect yourself from the sun. Let's go to break.